Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our first webinar of 2021. We're happy that uh, all of you can join us. My name is Josh Antis. I'm with California Coast Credit Union, and uh, I will be facilitating our webinar today. Before we get to it, just want to go over some quick things. Uh, we will have all lines placed on mute for the duration of the presentation. However, if you do have any questions, you can go ahead and include those in the question box uh, that's in the panel of your go to webinar system there. Uh, we also have a chat box that you can utilize as well if you'd like. That's also in your panel. And uh, we will answer questions as we go or um, at the end of the presentation. So stick around. If we don't get a chance to answer your question right away, we'll, we'll address that for you at the end. Uh, also, once our presentation has concluded today, there is uh, an electronic survey that you will receive. So if you could take the time to fill that out, that gives us uh, an opportunity to get feedback from you and improve our webinars as we go. It also tells us a lot about kind of what topics you'd be interested in learning about in the future. Uh, so please uh, take the time to fill that out and we greatly appreciate it. Uh, so Cal Coast, uh, it's 2021 and uh, you know, we're the credit union is strong, we're doing well, but we wanna make sure that our members are doing well or as best as they can during these difficult times. And uh, so we wanted to bring you something that will kind of kick off the year to really give you a good picture of how to budget for the new norm. Uh, I think back last year, we all thought, you know what, this thing's gonna go away in a few months and we'll be back to normal. But uh, now nowadays it's very obvious that we have a new norm. And so uh, we have to think about what that means to us, all of us, you know, on a financial level and how to prepare for that. So today to uh, take us through budgeting for the new norm, we have Terilyn Rose. She's our uh, manager of our financial fitness coaching program here at the credit union. And um, I will go ahead and turn it over to Terilyn now. Thank you so much, Joshua. I just want to thank everybody for being here. Um, this has been a really tough year for a lot of people. And like Joshua said, we're just looking for ways that we can help our members succeed with their finances. You know, we're getting into this new year. We've made it through 2020. You know, we've got 2021 looming ahead of us. Not really sure when things are going to end. So we want to talk a little bit about how to plan ahead for this new normal that we have coming on. And, all right. <laughs> um, today we're going to talk about how to evaluate what your current status is, kind of preparing yourself to look at that plan, updating it as things change, and then reevaluating on a monthly basis because things are changing so quickly. So we want to make sure that you're prepared to look at where everything is going every single month and adjust things as they happen. So the thing we're going to start about is we're going to start with talking about what the current state is right now. The beginning of the year is a really good time anyways to gather all of this information together and see where you're at. So we're going to start with looking at the income that you have. If you have income, if you have a pay stub and things are a little tight, we're, we're going to have you take a look at that pay stub and look at everything that's coming out of it. Look at your taxes. Um, take a look at what you owed for last year. You can go on to a couple of different tax websites and kind of pretend like you're filing your taxes, see what you're going to owe, see what was withheld from your December, the total year to date tax withholding. And then maybe right now, if things are a little tight, this is something that you can change to maybe file exempt for a couple of months to get that money back in your pocket right now to get you through if you're struggling to pay rent or your mortgage or put food on the table. Take a look at where that income is being withheld and see if we can somehow increase that without even getting a second job. Look up any flexible spending you may have. This is a really good opportunity to, it might be too late to sign up for it, but I love the flexible spending accounts, they're called FSA, and what they do is they withhold money from your paycheck pre-tax, and you can use those funds for medical, dental, vision. Um, I have used it for, you know, chiropractic, for massage, for acupuncture. You now can use it for some over-the-counter stuff like Band-Aids or anti-inflammatories. I used it for a knee brace, uh, my, my glasses, my contacts, my co-pays. Uh, you can use the flexible spending account for a lot. So this is a good opportunity to look at what you spent last year in medical, in dental, in vision expenses, 
and see if we can use that flexible spending account if you have that available through work and really maximize those funds. You also sometimes have a little bit left over that you can go in. There's an FSA store at fsastore.com. You can go in and use your flexible spending account to purchase some things. Maybe you have a little bit left over. Go see what you can buy on that flex spending. Don't lose any of those hard-earned funds. Also, when you look at your life insurances, so this is a really good chance to go in. I want you to update your beneficiaries at the beginning of every year for the rest of your life. I can't tell you how many times we've had members come in who have beneficiaries from their ex-spouse 20 years ago. I want to make sure that we're updating this and you have your money going where you want it to be. I want you to know how much you're going to get on that life insurance. If you have a term, I want you to know how many years you have left on that term to make sure that you have enough time to cover any dependents who may be relying on that income to survive. That's the whole point of life insurance is to replace your income until your dependents can function on their own. So if I've got 15 year old kids, I want to cover them maybe, I want to get 15 or 20 years. I don't need for the rest of my life because hopefully I've done my job well and I've taught them to be self-sufficient and they're not going to need my expenses, my income to survive. I want you to look at your 401k. So we're still looking at that pay stub. If you're contributing to your 401k, talk to your employer. Are they matching your contributions? How much are they matching? I want you to look at your statement and how much you're earning on that 401k because I, that's going to help you make some decisions regarding your funds. If I take a look at my statement and I'm only earning three, four, five percent on my 401k, and I look at my credit cards and I'm paying 29.99%, I have an extra hundred dollars. Do I want to put more towards my 401k that's only earning 5% or do I want to pay off that credit card and get 29.99% back in my pocket next month? So we're using this information to make more educated decisions about where that money is going. If you have a 401k loan, I want you to know when that loan is going to end and how much you still owe on this because we can use that information to say if I only owe $1,000 left on the loan and I'm having $300 withheld from my pay stub, maybe I can transfer those funds into something where I'm only paying 25, pay off that loan and open up that cash flow. So we're looking at ways we can increase that income coming in. If you're on unemployment, a lot of people didn't even apply because they didn't think they would qualify. With that CARES Act, they really opened that up a lot. If your income has been impacted uh, by the, this COVID, if someone is at home and you're not able to work full time or you had hours that were lowered, look into that unemployment and apply and see if you qualify. So they have expanded that. Who knows what's going to happen in 2021? But take a look at that and see if you can actually qualify for that. You know, Don't just assume that you don't. Now we're going to go into reviewing your assets. I want you to know what the value of your assets so if you take a look at your home, it's not exact. You can go to Zillow and look at kind of a general idea of what your home value is. You can go to Kelly Blue Book uh, and update and see what your car's value is. I want you to look at your investments and how much you actually have in your investments in your 401k and your IRAs. And again, all of this information is what we can use to help you move forward and see, can I refinance my home? Rates are extremely low right now, so if we can qualify, now's a really good time to stretch that loan out, get a lower interest rate, and maybe pay a little bit less out the pocket. Same thing with the car. If we have you know, a car that's worth 20000 and you only owe 10000 we might be able to use that asset and take some of that value out of it to pay off something or even stretch that loan out to lower your monthly payment. There's a lot of options when you have loans. So that's where we go into the debts against the assets. I want you to know the balance, the interest rate, how many more months you have left on that. Just gather this information together. All right, next thing. So reviewing our current state, I want you to look at every single creditor statement that you have. Actually go into their website get a statement and take a look at it. I want you to look at the minimum payments, the interest rates. You usually have to go to the second or third page. They bury it deep because we don't want you to see it. They're paying 29.99%. 
not a cow post, but there are some creditors that you're paying 26.99%, you have no idea. So go look at that second or third page, find out what your interest rate is. Look at your balance, look at your limit, know when the due dates are. Grace periods is something that California Coast Credit Union, um, we give you a 10 day grace period. We don't charge you a late fee. And there aren't a lot of places that do that. Uh, some mortgages will give you five days before they charge you a fee. I want you to know that information uh, so that we can use that when we're setting up our plan. And then relief options. This is something that I cannot tell you how many members I have met with in the past four months who did not know that their creditors can help them. They have programs in place where maybe they can do interest only payments for three months. So my car loan payment would be $10 compared to $300. That would be really helpful right now. Uh, maybe they can defer my payment for 90 days. You just have to ask. The lenders aren't going to call you to lower your payment and lower your interest. They don't know if you're struggling if you don't tell them. So contact your creditors and see what relief options they have if we're getting into this tight part of the cash flow. I can look at that and see, okay, if I can defer this or do interest only here or lower the interest here, or they can you know, tack it onto the end. These are all options that we want to take into consideration when we're setting up our plan for the new year. Okay. So now we're going to look in periodic expenses. This is one of those categories that gets overlooked a lot. So I'm going to touch briefly on this. I talk about periodic expenses in pretty much every single workshop that I do. And we're talking about the fixed expenses, things that happen once or twice a year, every year. So if you think about some expenses that you have, do you have any fixed expenses, fixed variable expenses that you pay once or twice a year that are coming up in the next six months? Maybe you have your DMV registration that's coming up. Maybe you have your Amazon Prime or your Costco. Yes, I have both of those. Maybe you have a timeshare. Maybe your property taxes are coming up. So we want you to kind of take a look at some of those fixed, very fixed periodic expenses and then look at the variable. So these are ones that are also a part of your expenses. So I want you thinking about in the next six months, what are some variable expenses that are coming up that you might have to cover? Maybe your tires on your car need to be replaced. You've been putting it off and putting it off and now it's like, no, you've got to get it done. Um, take a look at maybe you need to get a new cell phone or for your home, get a new TV because that's the only entertainment we have right now. So I want you looking at thinking about these variable expenses and asking yourself a couple of questions when you are gathering this information and it's do you want this or do you need this obviously your dmv registration you have to pay so i want you to make sure that we're putting that into your overall plan those kinds of expenses that are coming up but if you have anything that you can defer that you can suspend um, my gym membership, I suspended for six months because I'm not going to be going back anytime soon. Um, I'm going and taking a look at my Amazon Prime. It probably would be a good idea if I suspended that. Uh, that has been uh, one of my Achilles heels and I'm cutting back on that a lot. And then looking at occasional expenses. So we're looking at, you know, these are the things that you can't really plan for. This is maybe there was a fire in your home. Maybe there was an accident in your car and you had to pay a copay and your deductible of $500. So those are kind of the occasional that probably aren't any things like that, that you can think of right off the top of your head. But I do want you thinking about the next six months, what fixed expenses and variable periodic expenses you have coming up so we can also take that into consideration. All right, so now we're gonna question that we got together, okay? So looking at each of these categories and we're looking at planning for the new norm is I want less of my money going out towards these things that I have been paying you know, for the past couple of years. Like if I can reduce what's going out the door, that's going to help me get through the next six months. So my utilities, beginning of the year, do some research, go and contact some of those other cell phone bills that maybe, you know, cell phone companies that you haven't looked into, and maybe we can reduce your cell phone bill. Take a look at your cell phone statement. Is there any hotspot that you haven't had for five years that you're still paying for? I have seen that happen. Um, can you get into a family plan? We 
got into one, I was paying $90 and I got into a family plan with my roommate and my daughters. I'm now paying $41 and they are paying for Hulu for free. So it's kind of nice. And I wouldn't have done that on my own if I didn't do that research. Also want you looking at the SDG&E. If you're struggling, if you have any medical expenses. So if you have a child who has autism, or you are have someone who's on a CPAP breathing machine, anyone who's on oxygen, you actually can get a medical discount. So go ahead and contact utilities. They also have a lot of programs in place for people who have reduced income. So if you haven't already, reach out, see how they can implement that. Um, look at your auto insurance. That's one of those things that people pay a lot for. And if they've been paying for it for 20 years and they just have been with the same company, they don't even really look. So again, compare, call other companies. I love Wawanisa, um, Safeco is another one. And we can go in, they only cover safe drivers. If you have any tickets or accidents in the past three years, um, they usually are not gonna cover you. But if you have safe driving, most people who go over to them are going to save at least $200 a year, um, some even more. So I, I, this is a good time to compare. Have your auto insurance policy printed out with you when you're calling so you can compare apples to apples and make sure that you're not paying less or getting less for more. Um, anything that has a due date, this is a good time to look and see, asking those questions. Do I want this? Do I need this? So looking at the monthly fixed expenses such as Netflix or Disney Plus or that gym membership or Google Play or Spotify, which would really hurt me if I had to suspend it because that is, I, I love music. But if I'm struggling and if I look at that, there are other ways I can listen to music. This is not a do or die kind of thing. So if I need to suspend anything or cancel something, I want you to look at all those expenses coming out that has a due date and say, do I want this? Do I need this? What's the worst thing that's gonna happen if I don't pay for this right now and see if we can cut back on some of those bills that are coming out. Debts, looking at your secured loans, we already talked a little bit about ways that you can refinance. Um, look at taking advantage of those really low mortgage loan rates right now. If you're having trouble with credit, that's something that CalCoast will help you with. We can do a one-on-one -on -one review of your credit report and help you improve your credit score so we can get you refinanced. So reach out to us for that. Student loans, this is a really uh, interesting situation right now because they're all at 0%. Um, and they have kept pushing that back. It, right now it's gonna end at the end of January. So if you have any student loans and you are part of that 0% with no payment due, it will start again in February. So if you are still struggling, reach out to those student loan companies. They can do income-based repayment. They can do um, more, you know, defer again, go into forbearance. So there's a lot of options. Again, they're not gonna reach out to you you have to reach out to them. Same thing with your credit cards and your personal loans. You know, can we do a consolidation? Can you move it over to a 0%? This is where that good credit score is gonna help open up those options for you. Um, and just know what your options are, that you can refinance, you can stretch it out, you can do interest only, you can defer. There's a lot of options out there. So reach out to all of your debts and see what they can do for you. Now we're gonna go into these monthly expenses and researching where that money is going and how we can do less. So groceries is a tough one. A lot of times people aren't really paying that much attention when they swipe that debit card at Costco or they're going to Sprouts or Albertsons and they're just swiping that credit card and it just kind of adds up. So this is one of those areas. I thought I was only spending 300 a month and then I tracked my expenses and it was $600 going out the door. So I'm looking at, okay, I really don't want to spend $600 of the income that I earn on groceries. So how can I reduce that? There's a lot of really cool websites. One of my actual favorite, Poor Girl Eats Well. That woman takes $30 and makes it go for two weeks. She's phenomenal. So check that out if you're trying to reduce your expenses going out the door. I also like allrecipes.com. 
because I can take what's in my pantry, what's in my refrigerator, I can plug that into the website. These are the ingredients that I have, and they're going to come up with all these great recipes. Uh, that's where I got my favorite. It's an apple lentil soup, and I know that sounds really weird, but it's really delicious. Everybody loves it. I uh, also had a Rice crispy Caramel Rice crispy Treats. They will be, they will make you the favorite in every household to take those to. But looking at ways to reduce that money going out the door for groceries um, and then gasoline. I mean, pretty much nobody's driving anywhere right now. I'm, I'm saving so much money on gas. Um, I'm also looking at getting into a car that it's a plug-in hybrid. So I'm, you know, even cutting that more in half. And I'm looking at all those other monthly expenses that are going out the door, just researching ways to reduce that money going out so we can save, 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 save. Okay, now we've gotten all this information together. We research ways to open up that cash flow a little bit. We're gonna go into the five R's. Relax, review, reorder, resolve, reevaluate. So when we get stressed, our bodies go into fight or flight mode. It doesn't matter if it's a mental stress or a physical stress or a psychological stress, our body doesn't know the difference. And so our body tightens up, our blood pressure rises, our breathing gets faster. And the physiological effects of that is that my brain doesn't work as well. I get into this brain fog. I lose cognitive function. I'm less organized. I am not going to make as good decisions. So the first thing I want you to do before we get into this is you're going to take your right hand, put it on your lower belly, and I want you to take five deep breaths. And you're going to hold it for five seconds at the top and release this. What that is going to do is get your body ready to look at these expenses and make decisions that are going to be the most beneficial for you. So I, before you start looking at reviewing all of these numbers, I want you to take those deep breaths, settle your shoulders down and open your eyes and let's get to work and we're gonna review all this information that we have. We have our income. This is a finite amount of money that you get to spend, right? It's not like, it's going to change unless you have one of those jobs where you're getting tips. And then I want you to take that into consideration, track that. But I want us to take this income that we have. This is the money that we have to spend, okay? Now I'm gonna take a look at those fixed expenses, the ones that are super duper important. You wanna keep a roof over your head and food on your table. Those are the two, any financial guru is gonna tell you, those are the most vital things. We talk about want or need, food is a need. Roof over your head really is a need. I know there's a lot of people who don't have that roof and are struggling. Um, so, but, but I want you to put that. Those are the first two things that are gonna be on that list of things to pay. So we're gonna look at putting all these things in order. Um, what's the most important to what's, what's something I could live without? And then we're gonna take a look at those numbers and I'm gonna go down the list and I'm gonna say, okay, this is the money I have. This is what it will cover. You know, the first 10 things on that list the last 10, I can't, so I either suspend or I contact. And, and maybe that means you can't pay your creditors. And it's a horrible thing to talk about. It's really, it's going to, it really will hurt your credit if you just don't pay anything. So if you can't pay your creditors, that's okay. I mean, it really is, You, it is what it is. This is the money that you have. You have to put the roof over your head. You have to eat. It is what it is. But contact your creditors. I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to stay in contact and let them know your situation. Even if it's, I can't afford to pay anything right now, see what they have available for you and then stay in contact with them. If you, if they defer for three months and you go three months down the row and things haven't changed, call them back again and let them know, hey, this is where I'm at. I don't want to default. I do want to pay you guys back. You know, what else can I do? and work with them. We don't want you to default. We don't want to take the losses. So we're going to do what we can to help you. Um, just be careful here. There are a lot of unscrupulous lenders who are going to tell you, eh, it's only $25. It's only $40. You can pay us. It's not that much. Like, no, that's $25 that I can put for my groceries. That's $40 that I can put in gas to go to my interview if I need it. 
So don't let them pressure you. You know what you can afford to spend. Stick to your plan, right? And then every month we're gonna go back in and reevaluate that list. We've got all this information that we've gathered. Every month you're gonna take your income. We're gonna review, relax first, review, put it in order of, you know, maybe something's changed. Maybe your cell phone gave you two months that you don't have to pay them back. Um, now they're calling you and they're threatening to cut off and shut you off, but your water bill is gonna give you an extra 60 days. So now that cell phone is gonna take a little bit more priority over some of those other bills. So we're gonna reorder it based when things end, what kind of you know grace periods I have, what my income has changed. Maybe I got a few more hours and I can do a little bit more towards one of my expenses. So every month we're gonna go through and do these five steps. We're gonna take that deep breath so I'm in a good mindset. I'm gonna review my bills, reorder them in order of priorities, stick to my list, and every month I'm gonna reevaluate that list. This is really important. So I'm gonna to touch really quickly on this. Like if you don't have any income coming in really, then it's really hard to talk about setting up a savings. And you're just like, you can shut me out. I don't want to listen to this. But this past year, I think, has been a really good example of why we tell our members it's so important to have that emergency savings. Uh, we usually tell people three to six months. I mean, this past year, people have been furloughed, people have lost their jobs, and it's going to be a little bit longer before we get back on our feet. So these are just some ways that when we have income coming back in and when we start having that surplus, you know, setting up separate accounts is a really good way of building that emergency savings, maybe at a place that it's not, you know, I can transfer right away into my checking account. Maybe I open up a whole separate savings account. Um, you set up an automatic transfer. The day I get paid, I've got $50 going into my emergency savings. Uh, if I, I get a raise, you know, the tenancy, one of my favorite uh, clients that I ever met with, she had been making $3,000 a, a month for the past, you know, 10 years. And then she graduated um, and she was making $22,000 net income take home every month. Anesthesiology, if anybody wants to get into that <laughs> profession, that's pretty amazing. But she's like, I'm still using my credit card. They don't understand. So we reviewed everything, went through all of her expenses and they bought a new house and they bought two new cars and their kids were in private school and they were doing private lessons. We tend to spend what we earn. If she had just stuck to her normal spending and put all that extra money into her savings, or she could have retired after 10 years. So we tend to spend what we earn, but if you don't change your habits, if you just take that raise and plug the extra away, you can build that savings really quickly. The other way that I like when we get any extra income is using this thirds method. So if I've got a plan and I'm taking care of everything and all of a sudden I sell my washer and dryer and I've got $200, okay? I like using the thirds method. I'm gonna take a third of that, put it on my emergency savings, a third, make a payment towards one of my high interest credit cards. And then I'm gonna take the third and just do whatever I want. Guilt-free spending, go have a good time, buy that black leather jacket, buy the new Fitbit, don't tell anybody, just enjoy it because it's it's money that you know we didn't have. So I like to reward myself when I get excess money coming in that I, I have a plan in place, everything's taken care of, I've got this extra, I'm still gonna reach those goals that I have for myself a little bit faster, but I'm also going to reward myself for sticking to that plan. So I like that thirds method when it comes to building that emergency savings. Um, I am gonna touch one thing that I forgot to mention. So rent, this is something with that new bill that got passed. Um, they have got, given that rent moratorium through the end of January. Again, that's coming up really quickly. Um, but if you are making less than 50% of the median income, reach out to the San Diego Housing Commission. They do have some funds that are available to help pay. I think it's up to $4,000 to pay back rent. Um, if you've been unemployed for longer than 90 days, you're gonna take priority. So reach out to them and see how they can help you, okay? Um, so this is the end of what we're gonna talk about today. I didn't wanna keep you all day. We're gonna open the door for some questions. Um, this is my direct phone number on here, my direct email. We have Jevin Boyer, who's our other financial fitness coach. That's his direct phone number, his email. This is all a free service. If, you are, if you're a member of California Coast Credit Union, 
we will meet with you and take you through all of this with you, no matter if we meet with you three times or 30, it's a completely free service. And again, that credit review, we can help you with that too. So take advantage of this. If you want some help with this, reach out, give me a call. We'll set up a meeting with you and take you through each of these steps together. To everyone for joining us and uh, just keep us in mind if you need anything at all uh, in, re in regards to your finances, we are here to help you. And we wanna make sure that uh, we're here to help you thrive. So uh, contact us again, uh, either Terry Lynn or Jevin at any time. And um, we'll, we will continue to host webinars monthly. So uh, keep an eye out for the next topic and date coming up. Uh, you should receive an email uh, that will give you all that information uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, but for now, I wanna thank Tara Lynn for presenting today. A lot of great information and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.